updates on sports stories across the globe, Ebi Iyomon joins us. Good morning, Ebi. Uh, good morning, um, Ayo. Good morning, Rufa. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Um, today we'll begin the show. Basically, it's all about um, the Super Eagles of Nigeria and what they went through in Libya. Finally, last night, they arrived um, the Nandi Azikiwe International Airport and they are back home. Some have already returned to bases, but um, on arrival, they spoke about how they were treated and how they had to fly back to Kano and return to Nigeria, had a stay for over 18 hours um, in, in Libya under very horrific um, circumstances. Some of the players say that um, the situation like this is not what they wish anyone, even their enemies, because they were at some point uncertain and um, feared for their safety as even the airports they were um, locked in had no security um, at night. Well, we spoke to um, the coach of the Super Eagles, that's Austin Eguavorin, who talked about how badly they were treated. Held hostage somewhere, we couldn't get out. It was a bit of a trauma for everyone, but the thing is I can't really comprehend what must have informed that. Because we all know how football can unify nations, can unify people. And for Libya to act in that manner, or Libyans to act in that manner, was very strange to me. You know, but however, I want to say big thanks to the um, federal government of Nigeria for the quick intervention, especially Minister of Sports, uh, Senator Oko. And um, another good thing is the boys are not really, I won't say they're not worried, but mentally they're still strong. You know, it would have been nice to come back home with three points. Unfortunately, the game didn't hold. Of course, no game would have uh, <laughs> been played under such uh, circumstances. But the good thing is we're back home and also thank the Libyans for letting us go. Because it took a while, it took a while. And I don't understand what happened. I can't comprehend, seriously. Well, that's the um, coach of the Super Eagles, the Austin Guavoin, who also further went on to say that CAF needs to um, take precautions. And the Minister of Sports was on the ground to welcome um, the Super Eagles of Nigeria, and he said that they had a back and forth with um, CAF, and they have actually assured that um, disciplinary measures will be put in place. And he says it definitely needs to be put in place. I, I do this on behalf of the president of our country, who has also issued a statement about this fact. The entire country is aware of what you've gone through. The entire country has been awake since last night, you know, urging and praying that you come back safely to the country and to the government of this country. I mean, what was important was your safe return. Nothing else mattered to the president and to the people of Nigeria. I mean, we've had discussions with the various levels of leadership of CAF, you know, in terms of what has happened and what, what took place. But the bottom line is that, let me thank all of you for the great show of maturity. In spite of what took place, in spite of the provocation, we've seen all the pictures, the kind of manner that you were treated and how you had to try to see whether you could even find some rest in the airport, how you were stopped from even leaving the airport. And in spite of all of that, you remain calm, you remain mature. I mean, that is the spirit that is typical in Nigeria. And I need to, you know, thank you and thank everybody and welcome you back home. Well, now, CAF puts out a release saying that um, a disciplinary board will be put in place to um, look, investigate the issue. And they also um, spoke about how they have been informed about the conditions the players um, had to go through. But what is important to know that this CAF release was was brought out or published a lot later um, than when the alarms from the players and even the NFFs came on. It made people wonder why it took this long um, for CAF to address this particular issue. And now, let's not forget that this is not the first time a North African country is doing this to other countries. For the CAF Confederation Cup, we had on so many occasions where Ayimba, Red Monsters, Rivers United were held in the um, airports. So in 2022, Ayimba players were held in the airport for over 24 hours. And it's quite, it's quite um, um, funny or sad how stringent um, measures are not put in place. Why play in a country that is hostile to um, foreigners or um, players, because this is what sportsmanship is about, and they seem to totally lack it. And we're still looking at this. Libya published a statement that the Federation, the Football Federation, came out to say that 
they are going to sue Nigeria for not playing the game. They now came out to say that they were treated poorly as well when they arrived in Nigeria via Port Harcourt and they still decided to play that particular game. And for Nigeria not to play this game is something they cannot accept. But in Uyo, while we were at Uyo um, um, last week, they did not inform the NFF when they were landing or arriving at uh, um, Port Harcourt. They also arrived Uyo like other countries, the Benin Republic arrived Uyo. And when transportation or facilities were brought in for them, they totally declined it. But still, the NFF brought in police escort and they were given a very good hotel. You need to see their berths, it was fully air conditioned and big and massive. So you begin to wonder, is, was this a game plan from the start? Because if you won't watch that game, you see that they had a whole lot of time wasting, a whole lot of antics during the game. So probably it was just a game plan to uh, make the Super Eagles uh, mentally distressed and not play the game and also file actions. But we hope to hear from Kaf on that. And contrary to the statement that they made about um, the Super Eagles flight, the pilot of that flight, the Tunisian pilot who flew the Super Eagles to Libya and also brought them back last night, had a lot to say about the landing and how dangerous it was for them as the higher authority had forced them to land in Al Abraq. The flight plan was uh, to land uh, as destination uh, Benghazi, Benina, but unfortunately, and we got the approval from uh, the Libyan Civil Aviation Authority that we are approved to land in Benghazi, but unfortunately, when we start descent, they asked us to divert to uh, Labrig, which is at uh, almost uh, 100. Uh, 50 miles, that means 300 kilometers uh, around uh, uh, more far, but it's at the east. So it, was, uh, it wasn't it uh, was our, even our alternate, uh, something which is not good because uh, in aviation we have our flight plan, we calculate the fuel to our destination, so we have to avoid uh, this kind of thing because it may uh, uh, make a bridge to uh, safety. Uh, is re registered in aviation. We cannot, we cannot hide anything. So I asked them several times, at least eight times, and I warned them. Probably I will be in trouble uh, for uh, fuel. They said it's from highest authority. You cannot land in uh, Benghazi. You have to divert immediately to uh, Labrador. Thank God we uh, make it safely and we landed safe in uh, the other airport. Well, now, several posts have been made by players on their arrival. We had um, players like William Truce Ekong, Olai Eno, Taiwo Awuni, um, Calvin Bassi, all posts that they have returned safely in the country like we saw i was at the venue um, of their arrival last night and they had to call on calf we had a line not calling on calf to ensure that there's no reoccurrence and also the captain who kept on trying to reform, uh, reform nigeria of every step despite not being given uh, um, access to consistent internet on how they were treated a sad ordeal um, faced by the super egos and the officials and the whole team but that's all for me on sports. Uh, so, I'm, AB, I'm very happy about, you know, your position because the Libyans did not complain about any way in which they were treated when they came here. So, we suspect that everything was good. So, this is just part of their antics because the question I would have liked to ask you was, how were they treated? Because they released some photos of them seated on the ground. Was that part of the Libyan drama they were acting or the Arabian... Gaddafi-esque drama that the Libyans were acting. And please, Nigerians, support your country. Things are bad. We can talk about the evil of the country, but we must support our country. Shame on the Nigerians that are going on social media and say, you too, you treated them bad. That's very terrible. Shame on those Nigerians. At the point is that we must rally around. Your country is being I'm treated this way. What nonsense is all of this? And you're supporting the Libyans over Nigerians? Things are bad. I condemn things that are bad in this country, but I also stand up for my country. This is the only country I've got. And please, I want CAF to investigate. <coughs> and CAF should not act 
like they are taking sides already. Because that wishy-washy message put out by the Libya Federation doesn't cut it for us at all. They could have killed our players, diverted a plane, despite the fact that the pilot was, and this should be part of the Nigerians' evidence. And I think Nigeria should not only hear, end here. They should also take this case to the court of arbitration for sport. We should take it to CAS. This is bad. And it's not today the Libyans especially have been doing this. All right. Um, I'm glad that the Nigerian authorities well, are... Oh, okay. Were you going to respond? Well, let me just, let me just make my point and then you can respond yes, to all of us. Yes, I want to say... Okay. Okay. I was just going to say that I'm glad that the Nigerian authorities have responded. We've heard from, heard from NIDCOM. We've heard from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Office of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We've heard from the presidency itself condemning the actions and saying how they're going to take it up with CAF. I agree with you with what you said earlier on that it does seem like CAF's response, even in terms of a statement, came in very late. And if we're going to have an end or we're going to be hopeful for strict punitive measures meted out against the Libyan officials, then we want to see more seriousness with, because if this doesn't happen, then there's nothing preventing it from happening again. Like you said, since this wasn't prevented when we had a local leagues go out to play you know, in, in Libya, and now we've seen it at a national team level, then it means that if it's not properly tackled, it's going to happen again. I also maintain the fact that it's beyond football now. There are now diplomatic issues that need to be sorted out between the two governments of Nigeria and Libya. This is beyond the maltreatment of our national football team in Libya. This is beyond that. It, there has to be a, res, a resolution of some sort between the two governments as to why we have to we have this kind of diplomatic issues um, between two countries. Okay, Libya has been in crisis since 2011. It had uh, a civil war. Um, around 2011 and for the years that followed. And at the moment, uh, you have political actors, military actors, non-state actors, creating a very difficult situation in Libya. And even now, Libya is at the brink of war. But that is no justification for Libya to behave badly within the international uh, order, which is rules-based. So the behavior of Libya is condemnable. And I commend all the groups within the international community that have said that Libya's behavior is not uh, good for the progress of football. The behavior of Libya is uh, not uh, sportsmanly in any measure. The super egos were supposed to arise in, arrive in Benghazi. They were taken to Alabrak, which is uh, about 300 kilometers away. And the Eagles will have needed to travel today for over three hours to even get to the stadium. However, William Trust Ekong, whom I quoted yesterday, said, well, you know, they would rather withdraw. President Chinobu has spoken in support of the Super Eagles and asked CAF and FIFA to investigate this maltreatment of Nigeria. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has summoned the Libyan charged affair in Nigeria uh, to the ministry. NITCOM has also spoken up. Uh, NFF has also spoken up to say our people cannot be treated in this way. Our players were sit sleeping on the iron benches at the Alaska uh, airport. They were not given food. They were not given drinks. They were not allowed access to phones. Even the uh, 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 value jet crew that took them there, only the uh, pilot was allowed to leave the plane. Your, uh, the crew members were, were, were garrisoned, kidnapped inside the aircraft. Now, this is not how international sports should be uh, played. I said yesterday that Trusty Kong and his, uh, and his team should go and play and beat them today. But they've taken the decision to come back, to make a point that criminality, kidnapping is not allowed in international football. We leave it to CAF to enforce its rules and regulations, as CAF has said. But on a lighter note, Ahmed Musa is 32. He was <coughs> celebrating the other day at the Aquabio Stadium in Uyo. Please, if you run into him, tell him it has implications. Yeah. He cannot just be 32 as Super Eagles captain. And, uh, you know, that's the other side of it. Okay? Yeah. Tell Ahmed Musa this has implications. Now that he's back with canopillars. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. thank you.